The Fallout TV show was a massive hit and pretty much surprised everyone on just how good it was. We've been getting better and better video game adaptations, but for every The Last of Us, we also get a Halo TV show, so the expectations for Fallout weren't necessarily high to begin with. I believe that was a good thing, not that it took the pressure out of the people making it, but it made the fans, for the most part, very happy with the result. I think there are a few key elements that made the show so good, starting with the main characters and the fantastic performances by the actors, all the way to the respect shown to the IP by the people who wrote the story. Let's now talk about the characters, specifically the four main ones. Lucy McLean is one of the two main characters out of the four main characters, more on that later. Lucy is very easy to root for, starting as a naive go-getter with a heart of gold that is trying to rescue her dad after the events of the first episode. She goes through a lot after leaving the vault, and learns the hard way just how much the world differs from the one she was accustomed to in the vault. Her character is all about learning how to survive on the outside and having to adapt, while still keeping her core values intact no matter how harsh the world has become. Ella Purnell was fantastic and I could not believe when I discovered that she was British. Her American accent was excellent. Okie dokie. She also plays Jinx in Arcane. I'm sure everyone knows that by now, but it's like when you're watching Lord of the Rings and that scene comes out and you just have to say the fun fact, even if everyone knows it. The Ghoul, or Cooper Howard, is the other main character out of the two out of the four. More on that later. Cooper is a very intriguing character, having changed so much since the time before the war. Seeing his flashbacks and the current times on the show gives you the idea that he's almost a completely different person now, with some glimpses of the man he used to be still sprinkled around sometimes. In a way, he's the complete opposite of Lucy, being a veteran of this world and jaded by the two centuries of hardship he's had to go through, having lost himself and his core values along the way just to survive. His objective is clear, at least after the last episode, that being finding his family. Walton Goggins is just an awesome actor, he really becomes the character he's playing, and here he pretty much plays two different characters, being one character in two very distant and different situations. Maximus is a Brotherhood of Steel recruit and one of the four main characters, but below Lucy and Howard in terms of, I guess, importance to the plot. Maximus aspires to be a knight and is willing to go to extreme lengths to get there, at least initially, when he lets his knight die and take his armor. In his defense, the knight did threaten his life because he blamed Maximus for the whole Yao Guai attack when he should have done better, so I'll give this situation a pass. In his journey, he ends up discovering more about himself and who he wants to be, ending the season in a very powerful position within the Brotherhood, even though he was ready to leave that life behind. I was a bit worried at the start with this character, wasn't really feeling him, but his development was solid during the season and Aaron Moden made the character his own, with him having some pretty funny scenes as well. The last main character of this show is Norm, and I do consider his character to be a part of this group. I know some might not consider him a main character, but I definitely do, and a very underrated one at that. Norm was genuinely the breakout character of the show, with the entire plot within the vault being one of, if not the most interesting in season 1. We first see him as weak, at least when it comes to physical confrontation, but we end up discovering just how intelligent and courageous he truly is. Uncovering the entire conspiracy inside the group of vaults all connected to one another, he discovers the true meaning of what these vaults were designed for. His position next season is a true mystery, since he's trapped and might end up sidelined for most of next season, something I hope doesn't happen. Moises Arias was incredible. I was not expecting Norm to become my favorite character on the show, but here we are, with Norm's arc being great and the chemistry with Chet being really good. By the way, Arias played Rico in Anna Montana. If you know, you know. The rest of the cast was pretty good, with some pretty memorable characters all around, with a very honorable mention to my boy Thaddeus. He was really funny. Chet made a great duo with Norm. Let's hope we get more from him next season. Also Matt Berry, who does the Mr. Handy voice. He's just so good and has such an iconic voice. You really are the most devious bastard in New York City. Well with this show being part of the canon, it was important not to break it. There were some concerns with the whole Shady Sands date situation, but it does seem like it has been cleared and it fits the canon fine. The entire idea of having the show be canon makes me respect it even more. In a show like The Last of Us, they just adapted the story of the game, with obvious changes that actually improved the story in my opinion, but that's a conversation for another video. But in the Fallout TV show, they made an original story that also had to fit into the canon. And not only did the story fit, but it was also really good and captured the vibe of the games incredibly well. I have nothing but respect for this show's creators, having made something that the fans can be proud of. They showed respect to the IP and to the fans, putting actual effort in understanding what made the game's universe special 
and capturing into a TV show. Understanding the universe doesn't just mean using 1950s songs that fit the vibe, although they did that very well, even using some songs from the games. Doing things like the interaction Lucy had with that weird guy at the start of episode 2, or in the ghoul's shooting scenes where he does the slow-mo, which is an homage to the VAT system in the games, where the time stops or slows down and you pick which area of the target you want to shoot. There is also the scenery, or the way people dress and talk or even walk. If it walks, if it talks. All of those things were done with such care that it truly amazes me. The Fallout fandom got so lucky compared to the Halo one that it's not even funny at this point. They even made the main characters feel like different types of playing styles, like Lucy being the newcomer to the game, the ghoul being the veteran who's played the game multiple times, Maximus being the Brotherhood fanboy, or Nor being the guy who puts all special points into intelligence. I don't think most people understand just how special this show is, and I hope my perspective was able to bring a bit more light into it. I don't think that it takes a fan to make a great adaptation, it just takes people who actually care for their craft and respect the people that they're making the show for. This show is truly great, whether you're a longtime fan or you've never played a single game, there's a good chance you'll just enjoy the end product either way. FYI, I started playing Fallout games last year, having played Fallout 4, then Fallout 3, and finally the goaded Fallout New Vegas, my favorite one. How many did I kill? <laughs> also played Fallout Shelter and tried Fallout 76, but I couldn't really get into that one. Anyway, that's about it, see ya.